Get ready for a financial shockwave that will shake the world to its core. BlackRock, the financial giant, is predicting an economic collapse in 2023 that will change everything. BlackRock, the largest financial institution in the world, has become more powerful than the Federal Reserve and the United States government, and their plan for a self-proclaimed new world order is no longer just a conspiracy theory. With their recent publication of Everything Will Change and promises of You Will Owe Nothing and You'll Love It, BlackRock is clearly up to something big. But what makes this different is that they actually have a plan to see it through, and the signs are there if you know where to look. It all started back in March of 2021 when Russian troops began lining up on the Ukrainian border. While Putin claimed it was just routine military exercises, the world had its doubts. But what does this have to do with BlackRock's plan? In October of 2021, Dmitry Medvedev, the deputy chairman of the Security Council of Russia, boldly claimed that Ukraine is a vassal of the West, an unreliable and weak country not worthy of dialogue. Moving forward to December of 2021, Western intelligence agencies like the MI6 and CIA began reporting suspicions of a full-scale invasion. While the legacy media tried to warmonger and get more clicks, many people remained unconvinced. Fast forward to February of 2022, and the worst happens. Russia troops cross the border, guns blazing, unleashing the greatest conflict Europe has seen since World War II. Such an invasion was thought to be a thing of the past, terrorizing millions of innocent civilians and leaving thousands of soldiers dead in its wake. Despite the war raging on for weeks, Ukraine continues to fight. However, things take a strange turn in March 2022 when Larry Fink, the CEO and founder of BlackRock, the most powerful man in the world, writes a letter to his investors. Instead of focusing on markets, oil prices, inflation, or supply chain disruptions, he touches on something else entirely. As the war started, a million financial problems emerged but there was one person who seemed to have a different focus. BlackRock's Investment Institute deputy head, Alex Brazier, didn't just talk about the numbers. He spoke passionately about the Ukrainian people and the hardships they've endured. With Western military support for the country, he admires their resilience and courage. But what's more impressive is his belief in something bigger than just profits. Brazier understands that globalization is no longer the answer. The old way of doing things, where gas comes from Russia, gets burned in a factory in Germany, and then is shipped to Vietnam to be assembled before being sold in America, is no longer sustainable. He makes a compelling case that the global economy as we know it is dead. And as the world shifts its focus towards more localized and sustainable practices, Brazier's message is more relevant than ever. Imagine the potential impact when two powerful leaders meet to discuss the future of their respective domains. In September 2022, President Volodymyr Zelensky of Ukraine had an audience with none other than Larry Fink, the founder and CEO of BlackRock, a financial institution that wields a staggering $8 trillion in assets, nearly two times the GDP of Germany. What could possibly be the topic of their conversation? It's an undeniable fact that Ukraine is currently embroiled in a war that threatens its very existence. Meanwhile, BlackRock is navigating through a challenging recession and a potentially devastating tech bubble. The stakes are high, but when the leaders of this caliber get together, solutions can arise that may change the course of history. The world is watching with bated breath to see what will come out of this historic meeting between President Zelensky and Larry Fink. It's an opportunity for two visionaries to come together and combine their expertise to create a better future for all. With the power of BlackRock behind him, President Zelensky has the potential to bring about meaningful change for his country and for the world at large. In November 2022, the Ministry of Finance of Ukraine and BlackRock signed a Memorandum of Understanding to attract private capital for the recovery and support of Ukraine's economy. BlackRock's Financial Markets Advisory Team will work with the Ministry of Economy of Ukraine to ensure the success of the partnership. BlackRock CEO Larry Fink met with Ukrainian President Zelensky to discuss cooperation and future plans, including a visit to Ukraine in 2023 to pave the way for reconstruction after the war. Most importantly, that BlackRock will be funding the projects to rebuild Ukraine. 
In January 2023, the World Economic Forum convened in Davos, Switzerland, with attendees including representatives from Ukraine and BlackRock. While Ukrainian delegates previously sought munitions, soldier training, and intelligence, their focus shifted to securing financial support for rebuilding efforts even before the war's end. Specifically, they requested a staggering $1 trillion. Meanwhile, BlackRock, a profit-driven company, expressed optimism about investing in Ukraine and ensuring a fair return on their investment. They plan to revitalize the country with capital and business opportunities with the support of both the American and the Ukrainian governments. Now, I'm sure you've heard the phrase, history tends to repeat itself. And this partnership between Ukraine and BlackRock is a repeat of the partnership the United States had with Europe after World War II. At the end of the war, Europe was left in a state of utter devastation, with countless casualties and cities reduced to rubble. Meanwhile, the United States was thriving with a booming economy and industry, thanks to its profitable arms sales across the globe. In response to this crisis, the United States introduced the Marshall Plan, a revolutionary economic assistance program designed to rebuild and revitalize Europe. And guess what? It was a massive success. The money sent to Europe, whether in the form of loans or grants, was repaid in full and even helped to boost the U.S. economy. It's incredible how giving money away can actually make a country wealthier. And that's exactly what happened when the United States provided aid to other nations, creating a market for American businesses to export and trade with. This is precisely what is happening in Ukraine today. However, there are some issues with this current revitalization effort. The American government is not in charge, but rather a powerful American company is leading the way. But let's not forget that this is not the first time America has attempted to rebuild a country for profit in the 21st century. The most recent example is Iraq, with its highly educated workforce, vast oil supplies, and massive customer base. It's time to wake up to the harsh reality. Ukraine is on the brink of becoming another Iraq, a disaster that will leave Americans broke and Ukrainians bereft of thousands of lives. And who benefits from this chaos? The answer is clear. Lobbyists, corporations, and politicians. The corrupt nature of Ukraine's current system, coupled with crony capitalism and corporatism, is a ticking time bomb. If you need further evidence of this truth, consider the recent hiring of BlackRock Managing Director and Executive Eric Von Nostrin as a senior advisor on economic issues related to Russia and Ukraine. This comes on the heels of Biden's decision to bring in not one, but two BlackRock executives after he won the presidency. One of them, Brian Deese, now runs the National Economic Council and was instrumental in changing the definition of a recession so that Biden could spin the narrative that everything is fine and dandy with the economy. But it doesn't stop there. Mike Pyle, a former chief investment strategist for BlackRock, is now Kamala Harris's chief economic advisor and was a key player in imposing sanctions on Russia. This web of connections is just another example of how the interests of big corporations and politicians are intertwined at the expense of ordinary people. It's a frightening thought, but BlackRock is preparing itself to profit from the destruction of Ukraine while also ensuring its continued devastation. With their powerful lobbyists now holding top positions in the American government, BlackRock is pushing for more weapons to be poured into Ukraine and more sanctions against Russia. Essentially, they are pushing for the war to continue and escalate. Why? Because BlackRock profits from the military-industrial complex that they own. With over $40 billion worth of our manufacturers, they have a 16% stake in weapons maker Sturm Ruger & Company, 6% in Lockheed Martin, 5% in Boeing, 4% in General Dynamics, 6% in Northrop Grumman, and 7% in Raytheon. Since the war began, these companies have sold more weapons than ever before. And why not? With material previously sold to militaries now donated to Ukraine, other militaries are left with a shortage and must buy more. It's a vicious cycle that only benefits those with a stake in the military-industrial complex. Finland's generous donation of 400 million euros worth of equipment to Ukraine may have seemed like a noble gesture, but the reality is that it created a huge shortfall that Finland had to make up by purchasing the same amount of equipment. To make things worse, the very companies that were tasked with supplying this equipment were also selling weapons to Ukraine, raking in massive profits from the ongoing conflict. 
But here's the real kicker. BlackRock, the largest shareholder of these arms manufacturers, is positioned to profit from the war in Ukraine. While other investors suffer major losses in 2022, BlackRock's investments in Lockheed Martin and Raytheon saw impressive gains of 37% and 50% respectively. And let's not forget that BlackRock is the major shareholder in almost every other arms manufacturer out there. This means that BlackRock is not only profiting from the ongoing conflict in Ukraine, but they also have the power to ensure that it continues. And while the profits they stand to make from this deal may seem like mere pennies in the multi-billion dollar portfolio, the impact on the people of Ukraine and the world at large is immeasurable. Investing in the rebuilding of Ukraine is not only a moral obligation, but also a smart financial move. The ongoing conflict caused by Russian aggression is only benefiting companies like BlackRock, who are exploiting the situation for their own gain. By investing in Ukraine's reconstruction, we can not only bring peace and stability to the region, but also potentially earn trillions in profits. The cost of this war has already reached $1 trillion, and with $4 billion being lost every week. BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager, is poised to provide the funding and support needed to rebuild every shattered aspect of this war-torn country. Every single loan that Ukraine takes out will be carefully monitored and funded by BlackRock. BlackRock will ensure that the country's infrastructure, including every outlet, is backed up and running in no time. This is why Ukraine has sent a large delegation to the prestigious World Economic Forum in Davos, where the world's top CEOs, leaders, and hedge fund managers were present. Although BlackRock may not have the most altruistic of intentions, they certainly don't have any malicious motives either. Their main priority is financial gains, and they've honed their approach to ensure that Ukraine has access to the weapons they need to keep Russia at bay. But who can blame them for maximizing their profits? After all, they are one of the best in the business. That being said, they aren't providing Ukraine with enough weapons to completely overpower Russia and put an end to the conflict. BlackRock, the world's largest asset management firm, is manipulating the situation in Ukraine to maximize their profits. By providing Ukraine with just enough state assistance to provoke Russia, BlackRock is ensuring that the conflict escalates leading to more destruction and chaos in the region. And why? Because BlackRock profits from it. They are waiting to swoop in and rebuild everything that is destroyed, earning an astronomical profit of $1 trillion if the war ends tomorrow. But why would BlackRock want the war to continue? Because the longer it lasts, the more money they make. If the conflict continues for another year, BlackRock can double their profit. And if it lasts for a decade, they can make 10 times the profit. It's all about money for BlackRock, and they have their tentacles deeply entrenched in the government, dictating policy and making decisions that benefit their bottom line. The amount of influence that BlackRock has on the global economy is undeniable, and the prospect of an economic collapse in 2023 is a concern for many. While the future remains uncertain, it is important to stay informed and educated about the potential risks and take proactive steps to safeguard our financial well-being. Thank you for watching our video. If you got some value out of this video, please consider liking and subscribing. And don't forget to check more of our content on our YouTube channel.